different direction or a direction that, that we're not necessarily orchestrating. This is a great example of that. So they went to Trash Mountain. Where was it? Dominican Republic. Dominican Republic. All right, Republic of uh, Santiago. And I asked you two questions to think about. And I think they're two, at the heart of missions. Uh, anytime you go do something like this. So I don't know who's answering which one, but I asked you, uh, and I'll ask them both right now, what's one thing God did through you that you thought was really, really significant? And what's one thing that God did in you that you thought God was uh, really at work in, all right? So let's do the one thing God did through you first. Who's going to do that? That would be me. All right. Um, when I was thinking about this question, um, because we were doing a medical clinic, um, it was really important for us to be able to see as many of them as we could, um, especially the kids in the program doing their yearly physicals, and then being able to open it up to the community and see uh, members of the community who may not have an opportunity for um, any kind of health care at all. Um, so I think it's easy to get caught up in the numbers and uh, meeting the physical needs of the people there, um, but how much more important are those spiritual needs that are there? Um, their physical needs are, I think, what puts them far above many of us. Um, we talked a lot about on our trip. And just a side note, our team was incredible. Um, there are so many people on the team who were just so sensitive <coughs> to the Holy Spirit moving through the entire trip. Um, a lot of us didn't know each other and were from out of state, um, but it was really cool to see the unity of the team. And a lot of one of the things we talked about was just how strong that people is. And that had really never been a parent to me before. I always thought um, they have really great community and they're beautiful people, but I never really considered how strong they are. A lot of the kids are dealing with really terrible physical pain and conditions, but then they walk in and they're just as happy as can be and we got to um, love on them and play with them as they were waiting to be seen and you wouldn't have known that they were the physical needs that there were. Um, so I think that their physical needs are what probably puts them far above any of us because we have a lot of us haven't had to deal with that physical um, illness on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so their physical needs, I think, are what strengthens them. Um, and those physical struggles are, I think they're for nothing if they don't have the help of an eternity of Christ, and our Savior and our protector and our provider. So personally, um, with an awareness of the Holy Spirit, I had an opportunity to pray with a couple of people um, our team was really diligent about meeting the spiritual needs. Um, we had one of our doctors there, and he, he prayed with almost every single person that walked through before they locked the doors. And when he wasn't able to, others others would step in, and I got to do that some. Um, I got to pray with the family and an elderly woman before she left. Um, so I got to pray with them. Um, we had a really sweet encounter with a young girl who, her name was Genesis, which is like Genesis. Um, she was the very last um, little girl that we encountered, and just the, the beautiful nature of her, and I had the opportunity in my um, broken Spanish to talk to her about Jesus, and she knows Jesus, and just to see the hope in that community. Um, we partnered with the organization there, Kids with the Hope, and kind of the, the theme of what I was seeing was just that, that hope that they have. Um, and then even just little things like um, we went to the beach for our last day for just kind of a, um, a day to take things in and process through things, experience the culture there. And we had an encounter with this vendor that was just walking by us. It was just really neat. Um, all of the spiritual needs that were brought to my attention and the opportunity that I had to pray over people, pray with people. Um, and experience that. So the Lord opened my eyes to the reason that we were there. Um, through me, he was able to give me an awareness of those those spiritual needs of his people and just the hope that we can have in him and that even though we were there to meet physical needs as well, the spiritual needs um, were even more important. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. One thing God did in you, something significant that God did inside of you. Well, she kind of stole my story with Genesis. <laughs> she, didn't, she didn't tell the whole thing. No, so that's true. That was true. Um, I would just have to say that I would echo the unity of our team was incredible. People that we had never met from out of state just coming together. And even the director was like, at the last 
team dinner said, okay, I've never done this, but all of you guys are invited back next year. Everyone. <coughs> so, which was a real compliment, how we worked together, how God worked through us. Um, I was thinking through, too, and praying through this question, and the story of Genesis came to mind as well as one thing that I think God has started and then it's continuing to unpack for me. Um, little Genesis. I guess one thing that we're told us to do is to really think about, you know, a short statement when people ask you, how was your trip? Instead of saying, good. Um, you come up with something a little more meaningful than that. And so I kind of joked and said, well, mine is, my name is Carol and I'm a Dominican addict. Um, to bring them all home. Um, Genesis definitely felt in that cat fell in that category. Um, this sweet little girl who 